write this down, please. This is very important. Teach this to your entire staff. Change is necessary, but all change must be regulated by certain boundaries. And those boundaries are what I call natural and spiritual laws. They're principles that were created in creation by God. For example, God created trees with roots to grow in the soil. That is a principle. God created the trees to absorb sunlight, which is the, the, the rays from the sun, the ultraviolet rays. And that ray actually interacts with chemicals in the, in the leaf of the tree that creates what they call chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is plant food. So the plant needs sun. That's a law. For it to create chlorophyll. That's the food for the plant to live. That's life. If you take a plant, a beautiful plant, and put it in a box and seal it, and you come back in two weeks, the plant is completely dead. Why? You took away one of the laws. You touched the principle. You can pray for that plant. You can, you can speak in tongues over the plant. You can quote scripture over the plant and the plant will still die. You could pass a law that all plants will no longer receive light. And the plants will ignore your law. Because no man-made law can cancel natural law. Write that down, please. No man-made law can cancel spiritual law. No man-made law can cancel an eternal principle. So don't live your life on man's laws first. You must first discover what are the natural laws created by the creator and what are the spiritual laws that he placed in creation. This is why God laughs at man. Because he knows that there's a limitation to your intelligence. All of your PhDs are subject to nature. Never be impressed by a scientist. Never. I went to university. I got five degrees. I'm not a dumb man. And I'm never impressed with a scientist. A scientist is a copycat. He studies what's already there. Gives it his name, but he can't claim creation of it. All scientists does is discover. They don't create, they discover things. You can't discover what was never created. All of our learning is a victim of natural law. And this is why we must know when our boundaries have been met. Write this down, please. Not all change is improvement. Not all change is advancement. Not all change is progress. Not all change is development. How many times have you heard where a country passed a law to create certain economic development in certain areas and in six years, they destroyed a certain species. Why? Because they tried to violate natural law with a progressive decision. There's a beach here in the Bahamas, not too far from here. It's called Sanders Beach. Yes, I'm going to talk about it. My wife and I passed there yesterday again. Our government made a decision, the former government, to create a beach. To create a beach. God didn't create this beach to create a beach and they did some stuff. They put some rocks there and, and you know, the, the first couple of months, it looked good. Then nature visited us. Nature's name was Sandy. And Sandy said, let me see how well you've built what God didn't build. And in a matter of 25 minutes, the beach was removed. Millions of dollars was wasted. 
and today they are still nervous for the next hurricane why because you have to be careful when you start shifting things that God didn't create natural law can never be canceled by human law therefore any law that a government makes must first line up with two laws one natural law two spiritual law anytime a government thinks it is smarter than natural law or spiritual law that government will completely be a failure guaranteed and they will destroy a generation I put it to you that change can develop or destroy say it with me change can develop or destroy mm -hmm. absolutely so we got to be careful when we talk about change now we want to change we want to improve things but we must never forget that change must have some boundaries within which things change you know change is like when you go home and you decide that you want to rearrange your house you don't remove the walls do you you change the furniture you move them around see that's change that's that's the kind of change God allows you to do you can you can reorganize the furniture but don't touch the walls why the walls are what we call boundaries and they are built on what foundations And you touch the walls of life you are canceling the house can I submit to you a simple thought here's the thought remember this the only key we have therefore to regulating and controlling change is we have to plan the change and the ability to plan is God's gift to us because we can regulate the future and planning is man's proactive response to the inevitable nature of change we can plan how to respond to inevitable change we can actually regulate the change but we must do it within boundaries no change is more important or dangerous than uncontrolled change unregulated change change that is not wise I want to show you something. This is very important too. The most uncontrollable power on earth is change. That's true. But what is change? Write this down. Change is to deviate from a set of references. Change is what? To deviate from a set reference. In other words, change is to move away from a norm. It is normal for a tree to be put in soil. Is that normal? yes so if you decide to take the tree out of the soil because you feel like it you are violating a norm change therefore is to transition from a set state you cannot change unless you know the original state so you cannot just change because you feel like changing you got to first decide what is the original stake in the ground in other words change means to violate some rules what are those rules uh, let me just caution you there are some rules you ain't supposed to violate so we shouldn't just be experimenting with change we might be touching the rules that shouldn't be moved the Bahamas has a building code every building should be built 10 feet from the boundary that's a law right around the corner here from this church I was driving home and I saw an apartment building going up it looks like six feet from the boundary now I'm trying to figure out which officer did the inspection someone's breaking the law here and by the way I'm talking about the road boundary now this the thing is right on the road this is violation You can't just build anywhere there are some boundaries I think when we talk about national change 
and social change, there has to be somebody in the meeting who knows the boundaries. Y'all help me before I go. There got to be someone to say, excuse me, y'all, excuse me, guys, excuse me, sir. Uh, that violates nature. You cannot regulate and legislate my rectum to be an entrance. Uh-huh, go ahead and smile, get over it. In other words, we debating, we voting, but no one stand up saying, wait a minute, there's a natural law here. And I wanted to go in the record that I disagreed with y'all. And I go in public with it, throw me out the party. I ain't gonna vote against God's natural law. comes a point where collective responsibility has to be violated because your first responsibility is not to a group of men it's to God only I want to die in my casket with my conscience clean I did what pleased God to the best of my ability shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout hallelujah it doesn't matter what they say about this ministry. One thing they will, will, will say is, but boy, they stood for what they believe. Clap, clap, clap. At least they stood. I heard an announcement three days ago that one of the persons who ran in the Boston Marathon didn't finish. So they were running to finish it two days ago. And they asked him why. He said, because I have to be able to say, I finished it. I was so impressed with that spirit. In other words, I ain't got to win. Oh, y'all missed the point. He said, I ain't got to win. I got to be able to say, I stood. I finished. What are you standing for? Let it be known on that force that you didn't compromise your convictions for nobody. No commander. You are always remembered for what you stood for, not for what you fell for. I want you to find someone in history who compromised, and I'll give you $25. History never remembers those who compromised. It remembers those who stood for a conviction. That's why we can't forget Martin Luther King. He said, put me in jail. That's why we can't forget Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. He said, put me in jail. That's why we can't forget Mr. Mandela. He said, put me in jail. What are you going to go to jail for? Conviction. Can I put it this way? If you're going to change something, make sure you don't change the original law. Change is impossible without an original reference. In other words, original reference is the original source or the original stake or the original point or the original law or the original principle. And you cannot touch the original. This whole generation we are living in, in every country, is a, is a generation of change. Everybody want to change stuff. And no one's questioning, saying, wait a minute, what are we changing from? Are we tampering with things that shouldn't be moved? This is the question. We have to deal with this question. In other words, we need to find what I call true north. Write it down. True north is the original state, true north. Mm -hmm.